So, uh, I, w I didn't even hit record and I was about to say my stuff. I was about to actually going into the review. I don't know what the fuck happened. I clearly went into another fucking realm um, and I didn't know it. Crazy, huh? But I'm not the only one who, who said that type of issue. You all probably know that from, uh, you know, experience. Prob, probably, pra, what the hell was with that? Damn, I'm having terrible uh, days of speaking. So, we're going to be talking about another Shrapno Records band. They were dominant during the underground of the 80s. They were dominant. And especially when it comes to early U.S. paramental, uh, even though they were very shred-based, but even paramental can definitely can be very shred-based. Thanks, Dragon Force. Thank you. But, here... This is definitely um, that, but wait, but this is Dr. Mastermind. And now, I talked about Wild Dogs, and of course, with their singer uh, Matt T. McCourt, or Matthew T. McCourt, uh, however you want to call him. Uh, he definitely goes by many names. So of course, Dr. Mastermind is also one of his names. Of course, he goes by that name on this album. So, and of course, when he uh, was out of Wild Dogs, so, you know, after, uh, you know, the second album, which was Man's Best Friend, they, Mike Broner still had something for him. He still had use for this guy and decided to uh, put him in a project titled Dr. Mastermind. Of course, uh, he also, along for the ride, we had uh, Dean Castronovo. Yes, of course, we all know where that guy went. Uh, of course, he was with Wild Dogs at this time, and by this time, they were writing... Uh, you know, stuff for the next Wild Dogs album titled Reign of Terror. But on here, we actually start to hear, uh, you know, the progression in Dean Castanovo's uh, drum work. He definitely starts to flex from his muscle that you actually, you know, his, his style of playing is definitely very similar to would be on Reign of Terror, which I think um, on Reign of Terror, he really perfected his style. But here, we really start to hear you know, of what he would be capable of. But also on for the ride, we got Kurt James, a guitar player, who actually would, for some time, would be in uh, Matt McCourt's incarnation of Wild Dogs. But also here, we also got another guitar player, because Matt McCourt also plays bass, because they didn't have a bass player yet. Oh, Mark Varney couldn't find a good bass player? Oh, shit. What, did Metallica take all the bass players in San Francisco? I don't fucking know about that. But here we get another guitar player whose rhythm titled Ron. Ron Chick. What type of last name is that? I've never seen photos of this band. I don't know. I don't know if there's photos of this lineup, but I don't know. Does he look like a chick? <sighs> I don't know. Enough with the jokes. Let's just get into the album itself. Uh, it starts up with Domination, which this song would actually would get re-recorded for one of Matt McCourt's other bands. Actually, he would take this song with another band he would actually would uh, go on to, which was Mayhem. Now, do not confuse this Mayhem with the black metal band. No, this Mayhem is out of Portland, Oregon. And they were, and this is the same band was actually that was on the Metal Massacre Six with the track uh, "Tear Down the Walls," but he would take the song "Domination" for uh, the uh, album with uh, Mayhem titled "Burning Alive." So there you have you have that. But here, this is definitely di a little different than the. It's still similar to the version that does appear on "Burning Alive" by uh, uh, you know Mayhem, but. It's more shred-based, if anything. You, you get more uh, guitar-based stuff here. Of course, you know, shredding like, of course, of Kurt James. So that uh, starts off with uh, the right way. Melodic. It's okay track. It's not bad. Man of the Year. Goes back to the style of uh, Domination. Uh, and of course, um, Matt McCourt was very, uh, very kind of kind of obsessed. Uh, I, 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 uh, he was more inspired by world power and such, 
with, you know, uh, presidency and all that shit. It's like he wanted to kind of put, he threw that into his lyricism, especially on this album. So, but here we get The Villa, which is a good track. Definitely a good track. But this is around seven minutes long because there's another part of this track that kind of makes it. It's titled 2631. Uh, 2631. This is because it, it, it's a sh it just shows Kurt James shredding on his guitar. Yeah, it's another shrapnel uh, in instrumental. Everyone trying to fucking outdo each other on the guitar. See, oh yeah, we definitely can show off our skills. But wait, wait, wait. Hold your breath. Just hold it, hold it. Because it ends up breaking the mold because of F because it only lasts for quite a bit before it does go in to an instrumental track that's actually would be. It's very, you know, drums, bass, and all that. And it actually turns out not too bad. It actually breaks your typical just typical shred solo track that just seems to just show off the, uh, the guitar player's skills. Yeah, it doesn't where it doesn't turn into like Mad Axe Attack or fucking Metal Taco. <sighs> Please, I don't want to fucking go back to that. But yeah, uh, we want the world. Another uh, good track. Uh, control. Keep it going. Abuser. Uh, again, again, the theme going, and then we get uh, Black Leather Maniac, which is um, it's an okay track. This one. It's a little fat, uh, a little slower, but it's just okay. Then we get "I Don't Want to Die." Now, we've heard what uh, Kurt James was capable of. Now it's time to hear what Dean Castronovo is uh, fucking capable of. Yes, we get a drum solo, a fucking drum solo on, on this album. That's a bit of a change, but. For some reason, I was more pleased by the drum solo than I actually was by the little snippets of uh, Kurt James' guitar solo because it just sounded like every other fucking uh, guitar shred solo that I had heard that was uh, by anything on the Shrapnel record label. So this was like a nice change of pace. But this lasts for quite a minute before going into the actual track, which is a great way to end it. Wow. That went well. But, overall, this isn't a bad album at all. There, there's at times it seems to kind of go a little monotonous, kind of, uh, in a way, kind of filler-based. But still is a very solid release, nonetheless. So, after this, Dean Castronovo ends up uh, recording probably some of his best work, which is uh, Wild Dog's Reign of Terror. And Matt McCart just goes on with a very uh, depressing career. Alright, so there you have it. Um, definitely not a bad album overall. Uh, it's definitely at times typical of your Shrapnel Records label releases, but it still is has some very good moments on here that I definitely like. So, this video is definitely quite long. It's probably going to take a long time to probably upload. Thanks, wherever the hell I live. So, if you have heard this album, what are your thoughts? If you have any thoughts, you can uh, post your comments down below. This is Heavy Thresher saying I'm out. And I'll definitely see you on the other video. Oh, hell yeah.